Hello friends, hope you are well. In this video we will improve our listening skills, reading skills and vocabulary as well. Listening is art and if you are master in it, surely you are going to be a great speaker. A good listener is always a good speaker. So listen English every day at least 20 minutes. Practice reading and speaking English as much as possible. Today's topic is very easy and well structured for English learners, describe your home. So let's get started. I belong to a beautiful Asian country Philippines, my home is located in Manila on Carter Road. I live in magnificent house, which flaunts a small yet pretty garden at the entrance to my home. As you enter you will see an elegant formal living room attached to which is our stylish family dining room. We have a healthy kitchen that is a fashionable open one. We have three graceful and medium-sized bedrooms with the king bath on one side and the other two bedrooms on the opposite side of the house. There are curtains running throughout the house and the entire house is painted in a light pink tint bringing in the required brightness and airiness. I share my house with four more members besides me. My loving parents, and my two naughty siblings. They are the sole reason of my happiness, they complete my home and me. My house is located in a quiet, residential neighborhood that is surrounded by trees and greenery. The house is a two-story colonial-style home that is painted a warm shade of red. The front of the house features a welcoming porch with rocking chairs and potted plants. The backyard is spacious and features a well-manicured lawn. The kitchen is my favorite part of the house. It is spacious and features high-end appliances such as a double oven, a gas range, and a large refrigerator. The bedrooms in the house are located on the second floor. The bedroom is spacious and features a king-sized bed, a walk-in closet, and a bathroom. The other two bedrooms are also generously sized and feature comfortable beds and plenty of storage space. I have personalized my living space with a number of personal touches that make it feel like home. For example, I have decorated the walls with artwork that reflects my personal style and interests. I have also added comfortable seating areas throughout the house, such as a reading book in the living room and a cozy armchair in the master bedroom. In conclusion, my house is more than just a building, it is a reflection of who I am as a person. From the elegant decor to the high-tech amenities, every aspect of the house has been carefully chosen and designed to create a space that is comfortable and welcoming. I hope that by sharing my experience, you too can appreciate and enjoy the beauty of your own living space. Poland is known for its success story in the post-communist era with its emergence as a proud, independent country. It is a famous European destination for its picturesque landscapes, rich history, vibrant culture and historical places to visit in Poland. You can enjoy the sea, the mountains and various other outdoor landscapes in Poland. The delicious cuisine and Jewish heritage are a few of other popular Poland tourist attractions. These are the popular places to visit in Poland. 1. Wonderful Main Market Square this is the first amongst Poland destinations you should start your visit in Krakow with. Main Market Square is the largest medieval market in Europe and a famous hub of social life for youth and young tourists traveling from around the world. A busy urban space today, it dates back to the 13th century. 2. The Auschwitz-Birkenau Memorial and Museum it is built in the honor of approximately 1.5 million people exterminated here during the Second World War. Today, this museum serves as an important historical area left exactly as it was when the Nazis abandoned it. Complete with gas chamber ruins that makes it one of the foremost places to visit in Poland. 3. Krakow Old Town the main square of Krakow is the largest in Central Europe and serves as the center of the city's political and social life since the Middle Ages. It is the best place for Poland tourism for its amazing Renaissance feels reflected in the Sufkienens, St. Mary Basilica and artsy cafes and bars. 
In fact, Krakow has one of the world's most beautiful streets owing to its wonderful architecture. 4. Royal Castle Located in the old town on the beautiful Castle Square, it housed Polish royalty between the 16th and the 18th century. It was rebuilt in the 1980s after being destroyed in the Second World War. Don't miss out on the, the series of portraits of Polish kings in 23 18th century paintings of Warsaw. 5. The Museum of the History of Polish Jews Compared to other places to visit in Poland, it has opened in recent times and is an interactive museum which serves as a center of culture. Various events, workshops, debates and lectures are held here. This is one of the places in Poland that is notable for the depiction of the thousand-year-old history of Polish Jews. 6. Palace of Culture and Science If you are wondering what to see in Poland, this should be one of the first few items on your checklist. It was gifted by Stalin and is a long high-rise building that is inspired the Empire State Building. It is today a center for various events such as concerts, theatrical performances, sports clubs, and cultural activities. This is surely one of the most famous places to visit in Poland for your next trip. 7. The Vistula River Beach The Vistula acts as a district of entertainment and recreational activities in the middle of Warsaw. The beach, stretch of natural grasslands and various indigenous species of birds make this area a spectacular point to chill in the city with its vibrant colors and magical atmosphere. This place surely tops the list of most beautiful places to visit in Poland. 8. Ostrow Tumski This stunning island is one of the oldest areas in Wrocław. Bound by the river Oder, there are many prominent monuments on this island such as the Cathedral of St. John the Baptist, the Holy Cross and St. Bartholomew's Collegiate. The place has some fantastic architecture. Be charmed by the aesthetic and historic buildings here. 9. Rynik. This market square is located in the heart of Wrocław and features the Cloth Hall and the Town Hall with elements of Gothic and Renaissance architecture. Visiting the Rynik is an important part of your itinerary on Poland travel and amongst the best places to visit in Poland. 10. The Royal Palace The Royal Palace is home to the Historical Museum of Wrocław which shows the historical traditions of the city through interactive exhibitions such as Wrocław's Millennium. The Baroque-style garden and royal apartments in this palace makes it one of places to visit in Poland. Hashtag Hospitality of Poland Traditional hospitality has always been and continues to be associated with our beautiful country, which is open to tourists. This very Polish hospitality is legendary and dates back to the period of Sarmatia, noblemen's manners and feasting. Accepting every traveler under their roof was a matter of common courtesy. The well-known proverb, guest at home, God at home, reflects this Polish hospitality. Those words spoken at the beginning of a visit signify the joy of welcoming a guest in one's house. Today our guests can experience it both in big city hotels, picturesquely located manors and palaces and in the idyllic surroundings of agro-tourism farms or rural vineyards. Our hospitality is also inevitably linked to our tasty cuisine. Tempting proposals for getting to know Poland through the prism of table delights can be found in the offer of Polish culinary routes. They cover the whole country and led among tourist attractions, historical cities, museums, castles, national parks, sanctuaries, underground routes, recreational facilities. Along with the culinary delights, all these attractions make up the charm of the local routes. Whether in the mountains or by the sea, on plains, uplands or among lakes, the magic of flavors and taste spreads its power, according to the proverb, through the stomach to the heart, which takes on a new meaning on a culinary trail. Sightseeing. Poland is a country with a long tradition of over a thousand years and a turbulent history. 
This is evidenced by the remaining numerous monuments of settlement, defensive, sacral or industrial architecture. The multitude and variety of those sites attract visitors who are kindly and professionally welcomed. And there is something for everyone. There are numerous castles, palaces and mansions, mostly surrounded by historic and beautifully maintained gardens. Naturally, it is worth starting your adventure with castles and palaces from the most famous, largest, entered to the UNESCO list. Or having great significance for the cultural and historical heritage of our country. Heritage. Since its beginnings, Poland has been at the center of Europe, at the crossroads of different cultures. Therefore, here you will learn about multicultural and diverse traditions, historical monuments and interesting history. In terms of those resources, Poland is competitive on the European tourism market as it has many valued assets in the form of sites and events of high historical value, a testimony of Polish and European history. Flourishing Culture and Arts Discover the rich history and cultural heritage of a country in the center of Europe through as many as 17 sites from Poland entered to the UNESCO World Heritage List. And the venues and sites are very diverse, with something for everyone. Among them there are castles, historical centers, mines, parks. Tradition. Polish roads will take you to interesting places connected with local customs and unusual traditions. The most important of these is Polish hospitality. You will experience it, especially in the Polish countryside, where, in addition to well-organized and well-equipped agro-tourism farms, you will find beautiful landscapes. The cultural and culinary richness of the regions and a multitude of traditional and local products. Of course, festive customs are most closely associated with Polish tradition. Polish Easter is traditionally accompanied by many colorful events and tourist attractions. In Poland in particular, Easter is unique, having been part of our tradition and culture for centuries. Those include Easter markets, fairs and markets, colorful processions accompanying Palm Sunday and the associated competitions for the prettiest or largest Easter palm, Easter festivals. Easter egg painting workshops, and cheerful games traditionally associated with Easter Monday. The blessing of food in colorfully decorated baskets on Easter Saturday is undoubtedly an extremely attractive tradition. Christmas in the Polish way, on the other hand, means a Christmas tree sparkling with different colors, fragrant gingerbread and Christmas carols. Unique gifts, beautiful Christmas decorations or the wonderful smells of Christmas dishes are just some of the attractions we can find at fairs that spring up before Christmas in central locations in Polish. Cities and towns. The Christmas fairs have become real hits, loved by tourists and locals alike. Get inspired by those unique traditions, travel to Poland and explore many other unusual places, where you will find rich folklore and hospitable locals. Culture. Theatrical performances, film screenings, festivals and concerts, which are a real treat for music lovers, exhibitions of paintings, posters, photographs, which will delight art connoisseurs. And to top it off, wherever you go there is fantastic historical architecture. In Poland, even the most demanding tourist will experience sublime moments and pleasurable sensations that they will not forget after returning home. For our guests, Poland offers a wide range of places where culture can be fully experienced through the sensations of admiring art or music. Old Farmer and His Sons Once, there lived an old farmer in a village. He had three sons. They were very strong but quarrelsome. The farmer was very worried about them. He advised them in vain not to quarrel. One day the farmer decided to teach them a lesson of unity. He asked his servant to fetch a bundle of sticks. Then he sent for his sons. The sons came there immediately. First, he admired them for their strength and then asked them to break the bundle of sticks. The youngest son tried first to do so but in vain. 
Then the elder one tried to break it but could not. After this, the eldest son tried to break the bundle but failed in his attempt. At this, the farmer asked them to untie the bundle and break the sticks one by one. They broke all the sticks easily. He made them realize that the sticks were strong when tied together and breakable singly. He told them that they would be strong when united and weak when separated. The sons took the advice of their father and promised not to quarrel in future. Moral. Union is strength. The Farmer and the Snake. It was a severe winter. It had sleeted and snowed very heavily. Intense cold had prevailed everywhere. Strong icy winds were blowing and biting. Everything on earth had turned white with heavy frost. An old farmer after working on his farm was retuning his home. He was making his way through a dense forest. On the way, he saw a snake which was stiff and frozen with cold. As he was a kind-hearted person, he took pity on it. He picked it up and placed it under his armpit. After some time, the snake was revived by the warmth of the body of the farmer. It resumed its natural instinct and bit its benefactor. It proved to be a deadly sting. Breathing his last breath, the farmer said, I rightly deserve that lethal sting for pitying a scoundrel. The greatest kindness cannot befriend an enemy. Moral. Nature can never be changed. Three friends and bag of gold. Once, there lived three friends in a village. They were very poor. One day, they set out on a journey to seek living. They claimed to be true friends but were selfish indeed. While they were on their way, they found a bag full of golden coins. They were very happy to find so much gold. They sat down under a tree to discuss the matter. Finally, they agreed to divide it equally among themselves. But inwardly each wished to have all the golden coins to himself. After some time, they felt hungry. One of them went to the nearby town to buy some food. He decided to kill the other two friends. He bought some poison, mixed it in the food and returned to his friends. The other two friends were even greedier. They had already made a plot to kill him and divide the coins equally between themselves. When the third friend arrived there, they fell upon him and did away with him. As they were hungry, they began to eat the poisoned food. They also died after a while. Moral. Greed is curse. The Messenger and the King Once there was a royal messenger. He was faithful but reckless by temperament. One day, the king asked him to convey an important message to his army in the battlefield. The messenger was asked to deliver the immediately. He got ready to set out on his journey at once. At the time of departure, he noticed that a nail from one of the shoes of his horse was missing, as he was in haste, he neglected it and set off right away. He made his horse gallop. When he had covered over half of the distance, he realized that the horse was limping. He got off the horse to see the problem. To his grief, he discovered that one of the shoes of the horse had gone off. He felt quite helpless. In embarrassment, he made the horse run even faster. After some time, the horse fell down and died. The messenger began to run. At last, he reached the battlefield but he was too late to deliver the message. The king's army had been defeated because of no delivery of the message. He cursed himself for not being careful about the nail, but it was too late to mend. Moral. A stitch in time saves nine. Nothing better sums up the outdoors than the centuries-old human endeavor to scale mighty peaks. Mountaineering involves hiking, climbing, or just simply walking, on hilly or mountainous ground, with the help of technical equipment and support. In mountaineering, you will come across different types of terrain, mainly snow, glaciers, ice or just naked rocks. The feats of the like of Edmund Hillary and George Mallory to mention just two legendary mountaineers, 
have contributed to making this activity a popular one all around the world. One that has also been known to build a person's character. One has to be physically robust, very fit and display a decent level of athleticism and suppleness of body to climb mountains. Training, conditioning and preparation are essential if you are looking to attempt an ascent on a particularly challenging peak. In addition, the mountaineer, often having to withstand extreme climatic conditions, has to display a good degree of mental fortitude to survive and succeed. But in the end, all of this is worth your while, there is no better feeling than being out in the open. In high nature's playground, breathing in the pristine mountain air, as close to the sky as it's humanly possible to be. Mountaineering is as old as the earth, as old as human life. When it became a passion of the outdoorsy and of the adventurous minded, in the 19th century, many people would climb just for pleasure, for the sheer thrill of conquering peaks near and far. But over time, the sport has split into separate disciplines, each of them calling for varying degrees of skills and preparation. Today, climbers have the comfort of having the most advanced equipment and gear at their disposal. In contrast, Men in ancient times had to rely on their feet, their legs, their arms and their hands and their wits to climb mountains. These old climbing techniques are still very much relevant today but the 21st century mountaineer has the added advantage of depending on high-tech safety. Equipment, closer home, the Himalayan Mountaineering Institute has played a big part in the conquest of the greater Himalayas. Many of the planet's mountaineering greats have tested their skills, and earned their name, in the Himalayan theater of dreams, considered the ultimate arena for climbing enthusiasts. Mountaineering demands a lot of your physical fitness, and attempts on the highest peaks can push your body to the limit. Before attempting any climb, make sure you are fit enough to endure face icy winds and everything that nature and the elements may throw at you. Remember that mountaineering may be a very exhilarating activity but it is far from being an easy sport. At high altitudes, it is important to give enough time for acclimatization. And make sure you get a clean bill of health from your doctor before embarking on an expedition. One of the greatest advances in modern technology has been the invention of computers. They are widely used in industries and in universities. Now there is hardly any sphere of human life where computers have not been pressed into service of man. We are heading fast towards the day when a computer will be as much part of man's daily life as a telephone or a calculator. Computers are capable of doing extremely complicated work in all branches of learning. They can solve the most complex mathematical problems or put thousands of unrelated facts in order. These machines can be put to varied uses. For instance, they can provide information on the best way to prevent traffic jams. This whole process by which machines can be used to work for us has been called automation. In the future automation may enable human beings to enjoy more leisure than they do today. The coming of automation is bound to have important social consequences. Some years ago an expert on automation, Sir Leon Bagrat, pointed out that it was a mistake to believe that these machines could think. There is no possibility that human beings will be, controlled by machines. Though computers are capable of learning from their mistakes and improving on their performance, they need detailed instructions from human beings to operate. They can never, as it were, lead independent lives or, rule the world, by making decisions of their own. Sir Leon said that in future, computers would be developed which would be small enough to carry in the pocket. Ordinary people would then be able to use them to obtain valuable information. Computers could be plugged into a national network and be used like radios. For instance, people going on holiday could be informed about weather conditions. Car drivers can be given alternative routes when there are traffic jams. It will also be possible to make tiny translating machines. This will enable people who do not share a common language to talk to each other without any difficulty or to read foreign publications. 
It is impossible to assess the importance of a machine of this sort, for many international misunderstandings are caused simply due to our failure to understand each other. Computers will also be used in ordinary public hospitals. By providing a machine with a patient's systems, a doctor will be able to diagnose the nature of his illness. Similarly machines could be used to keep a check on a patient's health record and keep it up to date. Doctors will, therefore, have immediate access to great many facts which will help them in their work. Hello friends, today we will learn more than 300 daily used English sentences that will improve your reading, listening skills and vocabulary. Let's get started. Good morning dear. Hello, I am new here. My name is John. I am a teacher by profession. He is a talented man. By whom is he being treated? Are you joining us? Cheer up. It really takes time. It is a matter of sorrow. Why are you late? Slow down your car. I'm sorry. He is fit for marriage. Did you get it? I can't believe it. You have no match. What is happening here? I knew it. Kneel and give thanks to God. What do you mean? I'm sorry I can't assist you. See you next time. Don't involve me in this matter. Do you agree with me? What's your email address? Good night. He is against me. Have a nice day. I am tired. Believe me. I shall reach by evening train. What are you doing today? Go up. It's very thoughtful of you. I have completed my work. Are you coming with me? I'm on a diet. He tells a lie. Who is your class teacher? By God's grace. Let's do it. You will not be able to deal with him. I will try my level best. What nonsense. Don't be ridiculous. I will marry her one day. I did not understand. Where are you from? I got it. I wish you well. Everything is fine. Are you kidding? Good morning. I dropped in casually. Daily exercise makes you fit and healthy. God bless you. They do not understand. Whatever he says is not true. Do you speak English? Don't be so childish. I'm sorry. I don't have money right now. Read the sentences carefully. That's so kind of you. Good heavens. It's none of your business. I beg your pardon. It's all yours. How disgraceful. I'm at the office. He had no money. His words have weight. Would you please speak slowly? Wonderful. What are you doing? A crease is formed on the cloth. Call me any day. Your name is on the list. Happy birthday. Not the least. What is going on? The car is parked on the road. A lovely day, isn't it? Let us see where he stands. Where is your office? You're driving too fast. I said many things to him. Stop crying. When is the train leaving? It's on the tip of my tongue. I don't like tall talks. Have a good weekend. He will not refrain from speaking. What is your job? How's it going? How have you been? Do as I say. My mind is reeling. Did you get my point? Where do you live? I have a lot to talk about. Let's celebrate. How's your family? What's up? What's new? Pretty good. Can't complain. I've been busy. Thanks a lot. I really appreciate it. Would you like a drink? How do you feel about me? I'm returning your call. Can you tell me who is this man? Would you happen to know? My friends always makes fun of me. The temperature will come down tomorrow. I don't know. No, I don't want it. But he did not budge an inch. Excuse me. Do you understand me? There is something wrong with his brain. You are my responsibility. As you please. Well done, dear. Where are you? 
How can I go to the town center? He has a nasal accent. Can I ask you something? I'm at home. The soil of that place is fertile. Who is your favorite teacher? How old are you? I decline. Hurry up. Otherwise, you will miss the train. I missed my school bus. Can I help you? I don't need your advice. The holidays will begin on the 10th of May. I will come again. Do you know what I mean? I apologize for being late. My room is on the second floor. Will you please help me with this? You are wasting my time. I have a house to live in. Thank you for the advice. Come on. I don't eat nonveg frequently. Try to open this door. Not yet. I love you. He was tired of running about. He sleeps in the afternoon. I can't wait any longer. Slow down. Try a little self-control. Be calm. I love to play video games. Nice to meet you. I'm good. The train came on time. Talk to you tomorrow. I could see through the matter. Are you fooling me? Glad to meet you. Hurry up. Is everything okay? What time does the next train leave? He is still not well. What are you up to? I would love to. Fetch water from the well. How can I help you? What are your hobbies? I apologize. It has rained excessively today. Could you give me some money? What's the weather like? You are going too fast. It's a good beginning. The sun rises from the east. Be careful. Shut up. Go if you can. Drive carefully. Forgive me. God bless you. The time has come. Do not disturb. Come what may. Is all good. He crushed my hopes. Please give me your hand. Get off. How was your weekend? I will move heaven and earth. Come quickly. I don't agree. What do you want? Please write down this address. Stop kidding. Are you sure? No, I don't want. It is a strange thing. Could you show me your answer sheet? I'm sorry to interrupt you. Allow me. Will you go there or shall I? I made it. How can I go to the city? Do me a favor. I like fairly hot tea. Is everything all right? Can you turn the volume up? What do you think? What did you succeed in? Where are you going? I don't need you. This is your updated version. How much is it? Any day will do. He is serving his own ends. I feel sad about your loss. Yes, by all means. I have no idea. Have you wound the watch? I am feeling tired today. Sorry for the inconvenience. How dare you? Let's catch up. Why are you upset? Good day to you, sir. Follow me. Your turn. He owes the shopkeeper 50 rupees. What a bother. Do me a favor. We will break but not bend. Get out of my sight. Have a good trip. Rest assured. This doesn't behoove you. What do you want from me? Come with me. I have to leave early today. He had a narrow escape. What are your likes and dislikes? What are you talking about? Join me. I have no alternative. I feel much better. Do I have to? The examination is on my head. Enjoy yourself. Didn't you go to the cinema yesterday? May you succeed. Maybe he is my teacher. It's my pleasure. Please come as soon as possible. He became bankrupt. Have a good time. He has a bad headache. It was nice meeting you. What do you need? His luck took a turn. Get ready to go to school. Could you help me? I just made it. My watch is out of order. How are you? Are you done? All worship the rising sun. Stop making so much noise. I don't have time. 
She wakes early in the morning. I admire you. Are you married all? What is done is done. Please say something. I don't have time. Good afternoon. Whom do you suspect? We cook every day. Absolutely not. Give me a hand. He has a mild fever. Hope to see you next time. I'm good at my work. I do not mean it. I did as I was told. You are getting late for school. I'm on a diet. Thank you very much. How much do I owe you? It's okay for him, isn't it? I am busy. This work is not suitable for. They like each other. The house was decorated. That's okay. I am not accepting anything else at this time. I'm not ready yet. I'll pay. How's work going? Don't take it personally. It was the least I could do. You're the light of my life. I'll take it. Hurry. You're everything to me. I'm sorry, we're sold out. I don't want that. I'm not sure. I don't want to bother you. Don't worry. No problem. I get off of work at 6. Everything is ready. I'll take you to the bus stop. I feel good. I am dog tired. Everyone knows it. I'm divorced. I adore you. I'm thirsty. I'm an American. I am starving. I'm single. I miss your laugh. I'm very busy. I don't have time now. I'm cleaning my room. I have a headache. I can't complain from time to time. I'd like you to meet. I'm not married. Hello friends, today we will learn useful hotel phrases to improve our English. It will improve our reading, listening skills and vocabulary as well. So let's get started. Welcome to our hotel. May I see your reservation confirmation, please? How many guests are in your party? Would you like assistance with your luggage? Here is your room key. Your room is located on the 10th floor. Breakfast is served from 8 a.m. to 11 a.m. in the restaurant. Our hotel offers a variety of amenities such as a fitness center, spa, and pool. What time would you like housekeeping service to come to your room? We offer room service for your convenience. Is there anything else we can assist you with during your stay? We offer a discount for guests who book directly through our website. Please let us know if you have any special requirements for breakfast. Thank you for choosing to stay with us. The hotel concierge can help you book tours and activities in the area. We apologize for the inconvenience and will do our best to resolve the issue. We have a safe deposit box available for your valuables. Would you like your room to be serviced now or later? We offer a variety of room types, including deluxe and executive suites. Our hotel provides a complimentary newspaper each morning. Please do not hesitate to contact us if you need anything during your stay. We have a fully equipped fitness center for our guests to use. We have a shuttle service available to take you to the airport. Please let us know if you require additional towels or toiletries. Hello, I'd like to check in, please. Can you give me a room with a view? Do you have any available upgrades? Can I have a late checkout, please? Can you arrange for airport transportation? Do you have a shuttle service to downtown? Can I have a quieter room, please? Can I have an extra blanket? Can I have a wake-up call tomorrow morning? Can I have a late check-in, please? Can I have a room on a higher floor? Do you have any available connecting rooms? Can I have a crib or extra bed for my child? Can I have some recommendations for local attractions? Do you have any packages or special offers? Can I have a late checkout, please? Can I have a room with a bathtub? Do you have a gym or fitness center on site? Can I have your recommendations for dinner tonight? 
Can I have your help with printing my boarding pass? Is there a problem with your room? Can I help you with anything, sir? What time is check out? Would you like a wake up call tomorrow morning? Our hotel provides complimentary Wi-Fi for guests. I'm sorry, but the hotel is fully booked tonight. Please fill out this registration card for our records. Would you like a room with a view? The hotel bar is open until midnight. We have a conference room available for rent. Do you have any special requests for your room? Can I recommend any local restaurants or attractions? We offer a laundry service for our guests. What time does the restaurant close? We have a 24-hour front desk for your convenience. We offer a complimentary continental breakfast in the morning. The hotel has a no-smoking policy. Please sign here to confirm your stay. We hope you enjoy your stay with us. How may I assist you today? Would you like to extend your stay? Our hotel provides a shuttle service to nearby attractions. Can I offer you a complimentary drink at the bar? Please sign here for the room charges. Our hotel offers a valet parking service for guests. Do you have any questions about the hotel amenities? We have a business center available for use. What name is the reservation under? Can I see your ID? How would you like to pay for this stay? Is there anything else I can do for you today? Did you enjoy your stay? Is there anything we didn't do that you would have liked? Do you have any feedback or suggestions for us? Would you like additional towels or pillows? Do you need a crib or any other special needs items? Do you require a mini fridge or any other amenities? May I take your order? What would you like for breakfast, lunch, dinner? Is there anything else I can bring you? Would you like any drinks with your meal? Hello guys. Today we will learn English through reading and listening practice. In this video we will learn about yoga. You can listen or read these subtitles with us. Let's get started. Yoga is an ancient and complex practice, rooted in Indian philosophy. It began as a spiritual practice but has become popular as a way of promoting physical and mental well-being. Although classical yoga also includes other elements, yoga as practiced in the United States typically emphasizes physical postures, breathing techniques, and meditation. There are many different yoga styles, ranging from gentle practices to physically demanding ones. Differences in the types of yoga used in research studies may affect study results. This makes it challenging to evaluate research on the health effects of yoga. The Origins of Yoga Originating in the ancient East, yoga has gained massive popularity in the modern Western world. Its image has evolved from those photos we may have seen of the extraordinary practice of unbelievably flexible cotton-clad ascetics in India, or the 70s hobby of hippie types. Yoga has become part of the chosen lifestyle of thousands of Westerners seeking some real balance, health and well-being in their lives. Experiences of yoga can be close to nature, out of doors or on bumpy ground in large tents with slightly slippy carpets on summer retreats or at festivals. However, it is also common now to see the wonderfully tranquil and well-equipped yoga studios in the towns and cities too. Yoga teachers seem to be possibly even hipper than DJs these days, making their own tracks by bicycle, scooter, or nippy mini through city streets from one class to another. Taking life at their own chosen pace, holidaying in stunning places, teaching the much appreciated techniques and principles of yoga to grateful and enthusiastic city dwellers. There are yoga magazines, gorgeous yoga holidays and a rainbow of great yoga kit you can buy. But when it comes down to it, all you really need to benefit from the ancient wisdom of yoga is your own body, mind and spirit, some self-discipline, and a decent teacher to get you started. What are the health benefits of yoga? Research suggests that yoga may help improve general wellness by relieving stress, supporting good health habits, and improving mental, emotional health, sleep, and balance. Relieve low back pain and neck pain, and possibly pain from tension-type headaches and knee osteoarthritis. Help people who are overweight or obese lose weight. 
Help people quit smoking. Help people manage anxiety or depressive symptoms associated with difficult life situations. Relieve menopause symptoms. Help people with chronic diseases manage their symptoms and improve their quality of life. What are the risks of yoga? Yoga is generally considered a safe form of physical activity for healthy people when performed properly, under the guidance of a qualified instructor. However, as with other forms of physical activity, injuries can occur. The most common injuries are sprains and strains, and the parts of the body most commonly injured are the knee or lower leg. Serious injuries are rare. The risk of injury associated with yoga is lower than that for higher impact physical activities. Older adults may need to be particularly cautious when practicing yoga. The rate of yoga-related injuries treated in emergency departments is higher in people age 65 and older than in younger adults. It's just matter of one day. A cat was going somewhere. Then suddenly a huge and terrible dog appeared in front of him. The cat got scared seeing the dog. Dogs and cats are born enemies. The cat smelled the danger of her life and started running to be safe. But the dog was quicker than cat, so the dog caught her. The cat's life was in danger. Death was in front of her. Seeing no other way, she started begging in front of the dog. But her pleading had no effect on the dog. He was ready to kill her. Then suddenly the cat put a proposal in front of the dog, if you spare my life, then from tomorrow you will not need to go anywhere in search of food. I will take this responsibility. I will bring food for you every day. If anything is left after you eat, give it to me. I will fill my stomach with that. This proposal of getting food to the dog every day without working hard got firmed up. He gladly accepted it, but at the same time he also warned the cat that the result of cheating would be terrible. The cat swore that she would keep her promise at any cost. The dog became convinced. From that day onwards he started living on the food brought by the cat. There was no need for him to go anywhere in search of food. He would lie on his tent all day long and wait for the cat. The cat would also bring him food on time every day. In this way a month passed. The dog did not go anywhere for a month. He just kept lying in one place. He became very fat and heavy by lying in one place and not doing any physical work. One day the dog was watching the way of the cat as usual. He was very hungry. When the cat did not come even after waiting for a long time, the dog being impatient went out to find the cat. He had reached only a short distance when his eyes fell on the cat. She is cleaning her hands on a mouse with great fun. The dog growled angrily and said to the cat, You cheater cat, you have broken your promise. Now take care of your life. Saying this he rushed towards the cat. The cat was already alert. She immediately ran away from there to save her life. The dog also ran after her. But this time the cat turned out to be quicker than the dog. The dog had become so fat and heavy that it could not chase the cat for long and sat down tired. While running away, the cat disappeared from his eyes. Moral of the story. Dependence on others does not last long. It makes us lazy and weak. If you want to be successful in life, then be self-reliant. Once upon a time, there lived a young girl named Mira in a small village situated in the middle of a dense forest. She was known for her kindness and her love for all living beings, great or small. She spent most of her time wandering in the forest, learning its secrets and admiring the beauty of nature. One day, while wandering in the woods, Mira finds a wounded bird lying on the ground. She carefully picked it up and carried it back to her hut. She dressed the bird's wounds and nursed it back to health. Days turned into weeks, and the bird grew stronger and stronger under Mira's care. She would sit on her shoulder while he went about her daily routine, and they would spend hours talking to each other. One day, the bird spoke to Mira in a clear and clear voice. Thank you for saving my life, it said. I am not just any bird, I am a magic bird. I have the power to grant you three wishes. Use them wisely, because once they are used, they cannot be brought back. Mira was amazed and delighted. 
She thought long and hard about what she needed. Finally, she made her first wish. I wish for a bountiful harvest for my village, so that no one goes hungry. The very next day, the fields around the village blossomed with a bountiful harvest. The villagers were amazed and grateful for Mira's kindness. For her second wish, Mira wished for the ability to understand the language of all beings. And just like that, she could understand the chirping of birds, the buzzing of bees and the rustling of leaves. As for her third wish, Mira thought for a long time about what she wanted. Finally, she expressed her wish, I wish to be surrounded by love and happiness forever. And so it was, Mira spent the rest of her life surrounded by love and happiness. She continued to explore the jungle and help those in need. And though she never made another wish, she knew that the magical bird was always watching over her, ready to grant her wishes if she needed them. Playing at the park Sara went to the park with her mom. She saw many people in the park. Some people was doing exercise, some dancing in a team. It seems beautiful park to play in. Sara saw many children played many games such as duckling, rode a bike, swings. But she liked playing chess with the other children. Her favorite thing do at the park was to go down the slide while the music was playing in the park. She told her mom that she was very happy, and she want to come to play those games again at the weekend. She also liked when her mom helped her on the swings. At the beach On my vacation, Tina likes to visit on the beach with her friends and parents. Her parents always join her every vacation on the beach because they don't allow her to go with her friends. She likes to play soccer and tennis with her close friends. They are friendly. In the morning, Tina has breakfast and goes to the market with them. She is very happy and has fun to be there with them. At night, she goes to see firework at the seaside. She gets up early to prepare her clothes and suitcases, then she goes back home in the morning. In the bus, they are happy because they were singing in the bus. When she arrived home, she felt tired and doesn't want to do housework. Her vacation on the beach is a beautiful souvenir. She will go to visit there again. Having a picnic Franklin went on a picnic with his family. They packed lots of food to eat. They sat on a mat under the tree. They have fun during having lunch. Franklin's brother is friendly. He always tell a joke when his family meeting. Franklin always has a picnic every holiday with his family. Once, Franklin went to join his school picnic. He was a good leader in his picnic because he prepared many things such as foods, snacks, drinks, mats and place to go. When he went with his friends, he was an active guy to make his friends feel happy and fun all the time from starter to the end of the picnic. His friends like him so much and they want to go with him again next time. It was a nice day. Franklin had a great time. My family. I love my family. There are five people in my family. I have one brother and one sister. My brother is seven and my sister is two. My brother is an outstanding student in class. His teacher loves him so much because he always make his teacher appreciate his jobs, not only the classwork, but homework also. My mom and dad make the rules for my family. My dad is a good head of my family. My mom is a housewife. They teach me how to live in the society and offer advices to me all the time. They are my hero. My little sister gets in trouble sometimes because she is still a baby. I love my sister. Moreover, I comfort my sister when she is crying while my mom is busy. A favorite thing to do as a family is to play games together. My house. My house is where my family lives. It is blue. There are two floors and four bedrooms. We have a kitchen and three bathrooms. Our family room is where we like to watch television together. When people come over, we eat in the dining room. 
Behind my house, we have a garden and farm. We have a playroom in the basement. We have a swing in backyard. When I go outside with my friends, I rush to back home because my home is warm for my family. I clean my house every day in the morning and the afternoon. On Saturday and Sunday, I mop every floor in my house. I love my house. Bedtime. After I have dinner with my family, I take shower. Then I enter my bedroom to prepare mattress and blanket. But before I sleep, I do my homework and review some lessons such as math, physics, chemistry and English. Then I watch television for 30 minutes in my bedroom. When I get ready for bed, the first thing I do is brush my teeth. Then I go to the bathroom. Next, I put on my pajamas. My bedroom is beautiful because I decorate by colorful pictures and some flowers in my room. I clean my bedroom every morning. Then I lie down in my bed to go to sleep. I slept well until the morning. I love my bedroom. Once, there was a young boy who loved playing in an apple tree. He would climb the tree, eat the apples, and enjoy the shade it provided. As the boy grew older, he spent less time with the apple tree. He became busy with school, friends, and other activities. The apple tree missed the boy's presence and wished he would come back. Years passed, and one day, the boy returned to the apple tree, now an old man. He was tired and seeking comfort. The tree welcomed him with open branches and offered its shade. The old man sat beneath the tree and reflected on his life. He realized how much the apple tree had meant to him and felt a sense of gratitude. I'm sorry, dear tree, the old man said. I've neglected you all these years. The apple tree replied, do not worry, my friend. I have always been here, and I will continue to be here for you. The old man thanked the tree for its kindness and spent the rest of his days sitting beneath it, cherishing the memories they had created together. Once, there was a dog who lived in a small village. He was always hungry and constantly on the lookout for food. One day, as he roamed the streets, he spotted a bone lying near a butcher's shop. The dog's eyes lit up with excitement and he quickly picked up the bone with his mouth. But as he turned to leave, he saw his reflection in a nearby pond. Mistakenly, he thought there was another dog with a bigger bone. Driven by greed, the dog decided to snatch the bigger bone from his imaginary rival. He growled, barked, and opened his mouth to grab the other bone. But to his dismay, the bone he had was gone and all he got was a mouthful of water. The greedy dog realized his mistake and regretted his actions. He had lost the bone he had, all because of his greed. From that day forward, he learned the importance of being content with what he had and not being consumed by greed. Once upon a time, a hungry fox was walking through the forest. He spotted a bunch of grapes hanging from a vine. The fox's mouth watered at the sight of the juicy grapes. He jumped and tried to reach them, but they were too high. Undeterred, the fox backed up and made another attempt to grab the grapes. Again, he failed to reach them. The fox tried multiple times, each time jumping higher and higher, but the grapes remained out of his reach. Finally, exhausted and disappointed, the fox gave up. As he walked away, he muttered to himself, those grapes were probably sour anyway. And so, the fox convinced himself that he didn't want the grapes because he couldn't have them. Once upon a time, there was a little red hen who lived on a farm. One day, she found some grains of wheat. She thought, who will help me plant this wheat? She asked the cow, the sheep, and the pig if they would help her, but they all said no. So, the little red hen decided to do it herself. 
she planted the wheat, watered it, and cared for it as it grew. When the wheat was ready to be harvested, the little red hen asked again, Who will help me harvest this wheat? The cow, the sheep, and the pig all refused to help. So, the little red hen harvested the wheat all by herself. Next, she asked, Who will help me grind this wheat into flour? Once again, her farm friends declined her request. So, the little red hen ground the wheat into flour on her own. Finally, she asked, Who will help me bake this flour into bread? But once again, her lazy friends refused to assist her. So, the little red hen baked the bread all by herself. When the bread was ready, the delicious aroma spread across the farm. The cow, the sheep, and the pig all wanted to eat the bread. But the little red hen said, No, I will eat it all by myself since none of you helped me. And so, the little red hen enjoyed the bread all by herself, knowing that she had done all the work. Once upon a time, there was a prince who wanted to marry a real princess. He searched far and wide, but he couldn't find a princess who met his expectations. One stormy night, a young woman knocked on the palace door claiming to be a princess. The queen, skeptical of her claim, devised a plan. She placed a single pea under a stack of 20 mattresses and 20 feather beds, and the princess was given room to spend the night. In the morning, the queen asked the princess how she had slept. The princess replied that she had hardly slept at all because she had felt something hard in her bed. The queen knew that only a true princess could be so sensitive, as no ordinary person could feel a pea through so many layers of bedding. The prince was overjoyed, for he had found a real princess. They were married, and the pea was placed in a museum to remind everyone of the true princess's sensitivity.